Welcome everybody, it's Mr Bryant here. Um, first, I hope everyone is well and staying safe. Um, I have to admit that I don't think I've ever given us assembly remotely. So I'm assuming you're all sat down quietly, shirts are tucked in, ready to begin. Whilst this is a little bit unusual, we felt it's really important to make sure you fully understood what Friday is about and why Friday the 8th is a bank holiday. So Friday marks 75 years since the end of the Second World War in Europe, something which is known as VE Day or Victory in Europe. Like so many things recently, many of the commemorations planned for Friday have been cancelled or altered. So instead of street parties and processions, we've got a national sort of sing-along on TV, speeches, and then a two-minute silence at 11 a.m. However, this doesn't mean that the day is any less important because of these changes. It simply um, means it's been altered for the current situation. And, and I would argue that, in fact, it is more important than ever. So firstly, we must understand what the day commemorates. For us in Britain, it marks the end of the Second World War in Europe, a war that has often been portrayed um, as a simple case of good versus evil. And there is no doubt in the evilness of the Nazi regime. For you year nines listening, um, having studied the Holocaust, you are more aware of the atrocities committed by the Nazis. However, we have often portrayed the war in a simplistic way and have forgotten um, the moral choices and sacrifices that people had to make uh, during the, the Second World War. For example, our decisions to firebomb German cities or to abandon Eastern Europe, as, as the year 10 historians will know, in after 1945. Now, these would have been extremely difficult decisions to make. In war, there is never a simple case of, of good and bad. Now, the date whilst recognising the end of the war in Europe didn't signal the end of the war altogether. The war continued, in fact, in the Far East, um, where we were continuing to fight against the Japanese. My grandpa um, remained fighting in Burma, for example, as did thousands of other Commonwealth soldiers. So whilst people celebrated at home the defeat of the Nazis that these photos show, the war still continued. Within war, uh, Europe, the war was absolutely horrific. Many of you will have personal stories from, our, uh, from your ancestors with so many people supporting the war in different, way, in different ways. In total, a staggering sort of 35 million people died in Europe. And this is a number we can never truly understand. But we must remember those who fought and the reasons that they were fighting. Within Britain, we were fighting for democracy, liberty and the values that our country holds very close to its heart. Yet those at the time never quite saw it as this simple. It was morally complicated. The generation, remember, understood that war was not something glorious to be celebrated, but something terrible in which no nation emerges with its morals intact. And it's for this reason that I feel Friday is more important than ever. In 1945, nations emerged from the war and put their differences aside. A whole host of global institutions and organisations were established. The United Nations, the European Union, World Health Organisation. Within Britain itself, a new Labour government established a host of reforms. The National insurance, slums were cleared, free education um, until the age of 15. But arguably the most important, maybe the most relevant for us, was the establishment of the NHS, the National Health Service, in 1948. And this leads really on to the, the current situation. There have been a lot of comparisons made over the past few weeks, especially by politicians, between the coronavirus and the Second World War. However, we must be careful with this. There undoubtedly are similarities, the need to work together, the need to make difficult decisions and the personal sacrifices that we are making. However, there are a lot of differences. Nonetheless, this 
is probably why Captain Tom has become such a figurehead. Now, I won't patronise you with who he is, as I'm sure you all know that already, but he's certainly captured our hearts. And Tom has acted a, as a bridge, really, between the past and the present. He reminds us of the attitudes of those in 1945, the stiff upper lip, so to speak, the determination to succeed and to help others, and the generation that created the NHS. Now, we can learn a lot from Tom, as we can off the Second World War, which is perhaps the point. Rather than comparing, we should be remembering and we should be learning. Maybe on Friday we can use the commemorations to reflect on the example set by our ancestors in 1945. We should learn how they pulled together and attempted to create a better society. We should remember how they weren't perfect, how mistakes were made and how morally complicated it was. And herein lies a lesson maybe for the students to consider. How will you seek to better yourselves after the current crisis? Hopefully our, our current situation and remembering those in 1945 gives us a fresh appreciation of how fortunate many of us are. For if we remember this and if we emerge from the current situation with respect and cooperation and crucially without those old resentments, then perhaps in generations time we can make comparisons between us and Captain Tom's generation. Until then, I feel we have much to learn. So on Friday, please make sure that you stop and you reflect. Remember at 11 a.m. there will be a two minute silence to remember those who, who died in the, in the war, um, but also for those who fought and those who survived as a, as a way of remembering. There is a, a pack that is attached to this as well from Wiltshire Council, um, which has lots of resources and activities that you can day um, including playground games recipes um, making bunting to celebrate but the key thing is for me that two minute silence please make sure you stop and you remember and we learn so thank you for listening and stay safe